this meeting of Ohio County Fiscal Court to order. And I'm going to bet, ask uh, Sister Bess Ralph to lead in a prayer and a place of flag. Sister Bess Ralph. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you for today. Lord, we just thank you for the sunshine. Lord, we just thank you for every opportunity that we have to serve one another. Lord, we ask you to speak to the court to make the right decisions for our county. And Lord, we just love you and we just give you all the glory for all the things that we are so blessed to have here in Ohio County. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In all the years you know me best, every time I I've never failed to figure out something to embarrass you, right? That's all right. I can handle it. I got to make sure it's right. We, uh, before you have the July the 25th uh, minutes, I would like to have a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve. Motion by Kent Callaway. Second. Second, I will play. Bo Bennett. No. No. By our candy. And it was that direction. Got it. Mm -hmm. uh, any discussion, corrections, or additions? Discussions, corrections, or additions? Being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion passed. Uh, before you have the bill claims, payments and transfer, including a light list and a light light list. Need a motion to approve. Make a motion. motion by Bob Bennett. There was two late lists? Yeah. Mm -hmm. One on the front, the late, late, and the back. Second by Kim Kelly. Okay, discussion? Is there any discussion on the bills, payments? Things and transfers. Being now, I've got one. Let me find it here, Judge. That's okay. Go on. I'll get the band in the morning. Okay. All favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. The bills are paid. Before you have the uh, treasurer's July financial statement, I uh, need a motion to acknowledge it. Make a motion to acknowledge receipt. Motion by Kent Callaway. Second. Second by Bob Bennett. Is there any discussion or questions for the treasurer? Any discussion or questions for the treasurer? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign, it passes. <coughs> now we have the clerk's uh, July 2023 financial report. It's the same thing, it's an acknowledgement. Have a motion. Make a motion that we receive the clerk's financial statement for 2023 July. Motion by Michael McKinney. Make a second. Second by Kenneth Callaway. Is there any discussion or questions for our clerk? She's here. Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Pass. Okay, it's Arthur's turn. They've been real easy on on the others. So let's let's I hope the mood don't the change now. I want to give you all this first. Okay. Thank you, 
about me here. You're good. Okay, well for those of you who don't know me, I'm Arthur Leach from the County PDA. Uh, I'm up here requesting money for our triennial flight with Eagle View and Pictometry. Um, this is, you know, this is something that I feel like our office just has to have. Uh, it's very, very, very important for our office. A few things that we do with this imagery is we find new structures year by year. We can come in and we can I can compare a flight from a couple years ago to our flight now. We pick up new uh, new buildings, new structures, um, all kinds of different things that we can put on the tax row. Um, something else this does, it gives quality maps to the public. Um, another thing that it does is, you know, there's, there's certain things with our flight that we have now um, that is not the quality that we're going to get with this new contract that we have. Um, it was a, uh, most of the flight was on a four inch pixel and a nine inch pixel. Uh, I've got Lowell Davis here, he can kind of explain more about that if you guys want to know. But basically what we're doing is we're just going to get a much better flight for basically the same money. Um, we haven't had a flight, we haven't had a flight since uh, March of 21 and we're definitely due one in our office. Um, we are not the PBA office is not the only office that uses this. Um, I want to thank everybody that came to support me tonight. Um, I know that Bess is in the clerk's office. Um, they use this quite often. Um, they use it and it keeps her, keeps her voter row correct. Uh, they can come in, look at different houses, see where they're at, make sure they have them in the right district, uh, make sure that they have everything correct that they need. Um, the economic development, that's one that I didn't realize how much it did affect them. Um, you know, the county's growing. Uh, we're getting a lot of, you know, business that wants to be here, and these maps help them. Uh, they don't want to look at imagery from years ago. They want to know what's there right now. Um, they're looking at different build sites. They want to know the terrain of the site, how close, you know, the, the proximity is to another infrastructure. Uh, we're sending out lots and lots of maps uh, for that purpose. Charlie with uh, emergency management. I know that they use this daily in their office. Uh, new addresses, um, responding to emergency situations. Uh, during the tornado, if y'all remember these maps, we relied on them. Um, you know, several different entities were using these maps to find houses that, that, that weren't there anymore, uh, actually. And a good thing about pictometry, and it's within that, they, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but for free of charge, if something happens, tornado, uh, you know, any kind of catastrophe like that, y'all come fly it for free. Yes, we do. Yeah, we get a look at the affected area and then we'll, we'll mobilize the planes and send them back in and cover the area that they need covered based on the path of the tornado or what it's going to be. That's what happened with the, after the December 10th tornado. Two days later, they contacted us and they flew it. And we could see the path from one end of the county to the other end of the county. And that really helped us out with the FEMA, so we'll get the money back in there quicker. Uh, <coughs> something else as far as, uh, I'm sorry. the fire departments, uh, wildland fires. Uh, it's something else Charlie could speak a little bit more on better than I, but let's say there's a fire, you know, the fire that's occurred, they can look at our map, see roads that are there, whether it be new roads, old roads, and they can kind of get a point of entry and where they can stop this fire potentially um, down the road if it keeps progressing. Uh, add them in the Sheriff's Department. And it's not just our Sheriff's Department, it's KSP. Uh, they use this pretty regularly, uh, whether it be to, you know, scope out a property that they are trying to get a warrant on or something else is, I found this out today, um, if they don't know of a structure on that property and there's a potential hazard, they can't get a warrant to go in that property. Um, and they would need, you know, this map helps them see that. So they know what they're getting themselves into. Um, I'm going to try to keep this quick because I know we've all got a meeting to go to tonight. Uh, but the county has always paid for this. And um, it's not, like I said, it's not just because of our office. Our county benefits greatly from this. Um, you know, it's, it's a big question I figured I would get was how, 
how are y'all going to recoup this money? It will recoup itself. Um, this is the sole, my sole tool on, you know, adding new money to the tax roll for the county. Um, one last thing I want to touch on is we are, if you look, um, which I have the contract here, but our last flight was like I mentioned, it was a four and a nine inch pixel. Uh, if you look in that black folder, you can see the difference in a four inch and a nine inch, and then you can look at the three inch. That's what we're going to get through the whole county. They're not going to break it up with, uh, I mean, from the way I understand it, you can see somebody's, you know, uh, watch on their arm, you know. So how I would use that is I would go in, there's, there's properties that we cannot get to, uh, you know, whether it be gated off, whether it be fenced in, um, dogs, yeah, whatever it may be, there's properties we can't get to, and this eliminates that. Um, I can go in, look at that property, get their house, their building, their whatever it may be on the tax roll to uh, gain more money for us. But what I was going to say is the, the last uh, payment that the, that the county had made for this four and nine inch pixel was $77,578.75 and our new flight with three inch pixels, which will be excellent, excellent quality, is going to be $74,712. Um, that is all I've got. Um, does anybody have any questions for me? Arthur, we pay it in three payments. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. If you go to, I believe it's page nine, nine of 15, that's the, that's, I'm sure that's what y'all want to see. That's the specs there. And like I said, we, um, we've kind of worked hard to get this. Uh, I don't believe that one year contracts are something that y'all do, uh, very regularly. Uh, and they, they have managed to, to do this for us. Um, and I think that it's it's as far as as far as benefiting the county goes, I, I, I don't think we can go wrong with this. Um, Arthur, who do you use right now? We use pictometry. Pictometry. We do right now. Okay. We do. We use pictometry right now. Also, within that uh, black folder, if you look, is there a, a map of Kentucky in there? All those blue uh, counties, they currently use pictometry right now. Eagle View, uh, they're currently using those. I'm sure you guys have caught wind, I wasn't going to mention it, but I'm sure you guys have caught wind of the state possibly paying for these flights in the future. Uh, that is, you know, that's brought up. I was told years and years ago that we would have that flight by 23, which is why we're just now getting around to talking about this in here. This should have been done a while back, um, but we were promised by 2023 a new flight would be done by a new company that the state is starting to work with. Now it's 24, then it was 25. And now they're promising to us by 26. It just keeps going on and on. And, you know, in our position, a lot of PBAs have kind of taken it amongst themselves to, to get this flight done because we have to have it. It's not, you know, it's not something that we can really go without. And it's, uh, they've taken it upon themselves to, to in their counties, they're, they're using pictometry even when the state's supplying that flight. Um, we can cross that bridge whenever we get there, but we're not there, and and I, I believe that we need this. So, do you have to, to manually analyze the two different years worth of photos in order to compare to make to determine if there's new structures, or is there a computer system that man analyzes that to say here's a new structure on uh, on this property? We would manually that we do have a uh, program that would. They highlight whenever we're comparing. We do have to manually look at the areas and move the maps, and um, but it does. We do have a program that it hadn't been utilized for a while, um, but I'm going to start utilizing. And again, that'll be something that I will pay pay for through my office. Um, and um, it's just that's how we that's how we build. That's how we build our account. Is, is putting new things on. So. Appreciate Arthur, and uh, I think say two things about it. One. For you guys to ask, this will be paid for with the next code severance resolution, which will be the next court meeting. And we only have to come up with 24904 at this time, and we can get it from the code severance uh, resolution that we're going to do here shortly at the very next meeting, actually. So that's where it comes from. And the other one indulge me in a real quick story. Some of you know this, and, and uh, new, new guys haven't heard this. But the first time we ever done this flyover, uh, Jason seen this enormous structure 
that wasn't on any of his maps, had nothing on his radar about it. And uh, I guess his car had been out looking on the road, and this was on a gated lane, and the road didn't aim out, wasn't that impressive. Uh, later, Michael uh, McKinney and I went and looked at it, but Jason found it first, and uh, a $600,000 structure behind that little gate. Yes, sir. That the only way he found it was for that, with that flyover. Yes, sir. So. That's a common occurrence. Yeah. I mean, it's, y'all know the side that, of Michael? You remember that road? I, I can't take the name of it right now. I'm a guess bear run, possibly. No, it was bear okay. run. Hey, they'll be the next one they find it on. Cotton Lane. Cotton Lane. In the Cotton Lane. That happens. I mean, guys, we're, there's four people, technically two people, trying to get around our whole county by road. You know, this is, this is, this is in my opinion, a necessity. I appreciate it. And, uh, gentlemen, I think we should do it. I would like, I'd like to have a motion from somebody to go forward with it. Motion. Motion by Ken Callaway. Here a second. Second that motion. Second, Michael McKinney. Okay, discussion. Any discussion? So we sort of got out of line and discussed it first. But. One one thing I was going to ask back. So there's no way to overlay the, the two maps. And then hey, there's a there's a new structure here. An overlay. I mean because of the pick. Pixel count or no, um, or just the program doesn't well to overlay. I mean, that's what I'm trying to accomplish. Like to overlay it, we would have to have a new flight. I mean, that's that's how we would, right? right. But I'm saying that, that for it to hey, look at this, Arthur, there's a there's something new here. It doesn't do that for you. You're physically going to have to go through the maps of the entire yes. county. Yes, we would have to do that. that. Yes, sir. I'm not saying that there's not a program out there that right, does that, right. I'm, I'm, but I'm not aware of it right now. This gentleman that's with um, Eagle View, yes, sir. Is he, are you aware of anything like that? I, I am. Um, so we have another product. Um, the other gentleman up there in the gray sport code had mentioned being able to look at things in an automated type of way. We have another product that's called Change Analysis or Change Finder. And essentially it's all automated. So what we do is um, we'll take the last flight, Arthur mentioned in 21. Um, and we can compare it to the 23 flight. So what happens is you go into a web-based program and you just sign into it with an email address and a password. And the screen splits and it will compare whatever years of imagery you want to know. So there are categories that you can go through and you can click. So say you signed into this portal and you looked at this. You go up and you say, I want to see, there's, there's different categories. You can say, I want to see everything that's changed in the county. I want to see everything that's newly built in the county. I want to see everything that's demolished in the county because a lot of people yeah. will tear things down but never come in and let you know that they actually tore those things down so they stay on the tax rolls. So you go in and you choose whatever category it is that you want to see. Then we break it down by townships or however you want to break it down based on your tax and that sort of thing. So you might say, I want to see everything that's changed in X township. I want to see everything that's changed by 50% yeah. or greater so we can pick up the biggest uh, changes and bring the most you know, to the tax rolls, that sort of thing. And then literally you just hit start. And let's say you started with 10,000 parcels. It will whittle those down based on the criteria you put in for that township. And it might say you have 32 parcels that meet that criteria. You hit start, the screen splits, 2021, 2023, and then the imagery, you can compare the difference, and it shows you the difference. And then with the obliques, where you can look around the property, without ever even having to go out to the property, Arthur can take a look and go, okay, they've added a three seasons room on the back. On this one, they've just got a lean to, so it's an open, it's an open porch, it's not filled in with brick or cedar or whatever it might be. And then you just look, and you go back and forth, and you just hit next, 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 and it literally walks you through every parcel that's changed in that fashion. We can look at the It's all automated. It's, it's really neat. Good deal. Got any other questions? When I think I, I just spoke from the representative of Eagle View and just kind of indicated one of the concerns that I had was the, was the term, within the term it indicates that the customer should not have access to whatever services or product that was done uh, after termination. However, it's my understanding that I think probably Arthur's already covered this already. They'll, they'll be able to get a hard drive copy of, of what they've done. And uh, so we'll still have 
uh, some type of form of that. I uh, just want to make sure with the, with the Eagle View. I think he said that Arthur had covered that with him. Or I imagine Arthur had covered that with him. He actually keeps the hard drives. Yeah, and Charlie keeps the hard drives. Yeah. Okay. Right. Sounds great. Well, uh, Ann, do you mind doing a roll call for us? McKinney? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Callaway? Yes. Morfield? Yes. Okay. You're good to go, Arthur. Excellent. Thank you guys very much. Thank you for your presentation. Um, next thing we have is the uh, child support office lease. Uh, Justin, you want to talk about that? Yeah, the state had just indicated that they need the renewed lease uh, between the county and the child support office. This would be for a three-year term, effective uh, January 2023 till now. Same payment child support would make to the county for the release of the office space in the uh, basement of the community center here. I'd ask the court to consider that lease and uh, the judge's execution of it. Are there any changes from the previous lease? No, sir. Do you have a motion? Like motion by Bo Bennett. Do I have a second? Second motion for roll call. Second for by Michael, Michael King. Any questions or discussion? Any discussion or questions for Justin? Being none, on third say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion passed. Uh, Chief, uh, would you come up? Is Chief Basham here still? There you go. Here you are. I'm looking the wrong direction. What? I'm here. Looking over here. Okay. Come on up if you don't mind. Yeah, they have to open it. Open it and read it out loud if you don't mind. Read the type of truck and, and make sure it matches what we advertise for and what the bid is in front of home. Okay, it's uh, bid for uh, 2012 Dodge 4x4 four four commercial rescue 3500 requirements uh, with a 67 Cummins diesel engine with a 100 gallon compressed air foam system. Uh, set up for 800 VHF and CB radios with a LED light package. Uh, for $60,000 from Earl Horning, fire captain of Aronia Fire District in Oregon. And then pictures. $60,000. Okay. Uh, $60,000, that's more than it's in the ARPA account. Do you yeah. have the rest of it? We're going to cover the rest okay. with the fire department funds we have. Okay. Uh, did all the members vote on it? Yes. How well did it pass? We were all, yeah, everybody was approved of it. It's your district, uh, Larry. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we uh, accept our decision and give Ann uh, authority to write the check. We might just need, I would imagine Andy needs some indication as to what the contribution by the fire department and what the county is. You're going to pay the difference between the 60 and ours is 46,674 Yes. How much is that? 46,674 That's how much they have left. Uh, yeah, in here, and then they'll pay the difference on the truck. Okay. Uh, motion by Larry. Who wants second? I'll second. Second McKenna Callaway. Uh, any discussion or more questions for the chief? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. You can get with her and bring her the information where y'all pay your part and all that, and she'll get you checked. Yep. Okay, yeah, I'll be in tomorrow. Okay. Right, thank you. Thank you, chief. Thank you. Uh, her father's house is here to talk to us a minute. 
And uh, uh, I'm going to tell you, Ms. Tisher, we got some good uh, news, I think. Yeah. But there's a grant that absolutely matches what y'all are doing in uh, uh, a larger amount than even that we, we've talked about. And uh, we're going to give you, get you the name of some grant writers that can yeah. help you do it. Awesome. Of course, they can be paid out of the grant funds. Yeah, that's great. Thank so, you. Just give us a report on what you're doing. Yeah, good deal. I got some stuff okay. here I want to hand you guys. Just kind of give me a little. Just like passing the desk. What we've got, um, well, first of all, I'll just give you a little quick update. I don't want to take up too much of your time. But so currently, right now at Father's House, we have 22 active clients. Um, nine of those guys are actually in the transition phase of the program. I mean, we'll be, we'll, we will have been uh, open for a year on September 12th. So we haven't quite made that here yet, but, but we have nine, nine gentlemen that are in the transition phase, which are doing really good. They're all just, they're really doing good. And then we have 13 that are there in the residential part of it right now. We've probably got somewhere between five and six, what we kind of call on a string, so to speak, because they're in the court system and you never know what's gonna happen there, but um, that we've actually accepted into our program. We're just kind of waiting to see uh, kind of where they stand legally to be there or not. So that's kind of where we are right now in the program itself. But as you guys all know, we've been here many times and discussed these things, but we are actually actively working on our other, the other part of our facility so that we can broaden this reach that we're trying to do here. Um, until we get that completed, we're kind of limited in space and what we've done. Um, Michael's been out and took a tour of the facility here not too long ago. so. He kind of knows, I guess, a little more about what I'm talking about. But anyway, so what you have before you there is a project that we're really needing to complete. Um, we're working on the office space in the other building, and uh, we're just about to get that squared away. But we need this intake room, which is what I've got, what I've handed you all. Uh, what this will do for us as Father's House is it's extremely important that we have an area that's designated for intake process for these gentlemen when they come into our program. Um, obviously for the safety of the entire program. Right now, we, we, we do this, this procedure in the same building that everyone else is in, and it's kind of, it's pretty difficult to do, just to be honest with you. We, it's, we're doing it, we have been doing it, but, but having this, this uh, room here ready to use is a, is a huge, huge step up for us. Um, it'll, it'll really just enable us to be able to make this intake process safer and more effective than the way we're doing it right now. And what it'll do, it's, it's like it adjoins the office area that we're, we're renovating right now. And once this area, this intake room is complete, uh, once a gentleman comes into our program and we, we, you know, we've accepted him, and he'll, he'll, he'll basically go directly from this office area into this intake place and where, as I wrote it out there for you all so you kind of know the details. But you know, it's basically the procedure we go through when someone comes into the building uh, to make sure they're not bringing anything with them and uh, wanted or unwanted and uh, they go through all of those things there we also have just recently uh, finished a transition apartment there in that building uh, it's actually uh, it's just like a big studio apartment and it's it has the capacity for five five guys there and it's a uh, transitional living it's uh it's for the guys that are in transition which when they hit the transition phase of this program they're allowed to leave they can actually move home or they have to go to a safe place, put it that way. It has to be approved by Father's House, you know, a safe, drug-free place for them to go to. Well, not all of them have a place to go to. A lot of them, you know, their whole family is just drugs. They just don't have anywhere to go. Uh, so that's what this transition apartment is for. It's a place for them to go to for the six months of transition to enable them to have a little more freedoms to get out and find a, a place of their own and kind of just a little more, but yet they're still kind of under the umbrella of Father's House. Well, this intake room will be their area for their laundry and things like that, because they don't have that in the apartment. So anyway, that's kind of what we're coming to you about tonight, is this, this specific project. And I'm asking you to see if you guys can help us with it in any way that you could possibly help us with. It just would really be appreciated and help us to get this thing rolling so that we can, well, so that we can operate more effectively, just to be honest, you know safely 
you know, it's it's a very uh, touchy spot there when you're doing that. You have someone come in. A lot of times they come in, you know, they they're full of drugs internally, and we want to make sure nothing else is coming in with them. And this would make this so much easier for us to be able to do that and be able to keep a you know just to do it better, basically. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Well, Jimmy, I'll tell the rest of the court. Jimmy uh, Cantrell, he brags on that you're you're a good team with him. Yeah. You all work together well. Thing. Yeah. So, guys, what do you think? So I have a question. Small amount of okay. the, uh, I know back in December, the county was awarded a, a grant um, in regards to uh, opiate. Do you, do you, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Because I wasn't on the court actually in December, but I remember. I don't really know, just to be honest, uh, like uh, the specific details of that. I don't know you guys may, but. I do know that there's uh, opioid abatement money that's awarded to each county, and I know we got our, our as I say we, Ohio County got our portion of that. I also know it's attached with a lot of stipulations and things in order to use it appropriately. Uh, like Judge Johnson just said, though, it's basically its intent is to combat opioid addiction. I mean, that's really what it's for, you know, to to combat. I know we went to. Um, we went to a town hall meeting back in November of last year about this opioid abatement money, and at that time it hadn't actually, you know, been given out. It has now. I'm not sure. Uh, Ann could probably tell you. I'm not sure what the amount is that Ohio County received or what your intentions are for it. That's a. I would like to know that. But uh, the last time we were here, I asked that question, and you guys really weren't certain yet about how you were doing all that. But, um, but yeah, there's some funds there that are available. Again, I'm not sure what the court's intention are, you know, to do with that. Maybe you have, I don't know, but yeah, yeah, we definitely, we definitely, we would like to be able to utilize that. You know, long story short, this facility that I keep talking about, when we get this thing all able to be used the way that we're intending to use it, we will fall into all three of those categories because that's what we want to do. We want to be able to have prevention classes for, for young adults and for teenagers. We want to be able to to be able to minister and have classes and therapy sessions for these these guys family you know most of these guys their whole family is, is wrapped up in addiction in some way or another you know it's not just about that person in the program and we just you know we just can't do that right now at one facility but we have the means there to do that and that's our intention that's our goal our goal is to eventually just to be a a central hub so to speak for recovery for ohio county and surrounding counties you know we have gentlemen in our program now from Butler County, you know, from Hancock County, from Franklin, Kentucky. We have, you know, gentlemen in there from everywhere, really, because we, we, we accept them from the court. So, you know, yeah. Um, and now this, and this, uh, this is all in, this is your completion of the product, or is this just materials? This is, this is just materials only, because we have uh, our guys actually lend a hand and do a lot of the labor for us. The stuff that they can't do, we hire, we'll hire to, to come in and do. Uh, we have a gentleman in our program right now. Um, he's in phase four of the program, so he has about 10 weeks before he hits transition. But in the in his time he's been at Father's House, he we've we've assisted him and helping him. He's uh, very very versed in construction and has a that's his background, you know. He's actually he was he was raised up at, in the Mennonite community. So there's not too many things he can't do. And he has literally been able to, with our assistance, uh, he has started his own construction company while he's been at Father's House. And he, he offers a lot of help to us in this area. And he volunteers a lot of that labor, obviously. You know, he's part of this program. But so we do, we have, so this is this is materials only. That's what, what I've shown you here. Okay, uh, Ann and I sort of heads together. Mostly hers though, by the way. Uh, that, you're supposed to be pleased with that. Uh, I give you credit. Okay. Okay. Uh, but what we think we should do, this, we knew it would come, we were expecting probably a larger amount. But anyway, we can, if we can okay this tonight, tell her okay, then we won't have them until the next court meeting. But at the next court meeting, we can do a ARPA a resolution. We have enough there to pay them five. And that would be unforeseen things to finish up their material yesterday. If we could have a motion to that effect, then the next meeting I'd do it again because you had to pass the resolution. But this would give her the okay, go ahead and 
charge the stuff and know that she's gonna get paid in two weeks. Yeah, I would I would entertain that. I was just I was wanting to find out more from Ann about that grant money and what and what the uh, the stipulations on that was. But I mean I know that it was Yeah, it that's was, why we was, didn't go into the opioids till we understand it more. We understand the ARPA more. Right. And if that could be done with ARPA funds, I think that's that's a good avenue to take. So I'd like to make a motion that we approve Ann to do the resolution for our next meeting for uh, Entertaining this, oh, you said five thousand for a lot of money. So, Thank you. Uh, motion by Michael McKinney, second by Bo Bennett. Any discussion? All right. Well, thank you very much, guys. Thanks. All favor. Thank, thank, thank you for what you do. Thank you. Opposed, like sign. Motion passed. Okay. Move on to. Uh, Committee report. No, no, I'm sorry. Back to this. No agenda, but Charlie Shields got something for us. We'll do that before we do, do the, uh, before we go into the. Thank you so much, folks. Yes, thank you, guys. On April 11th, uh, we voted here at the court to take on some river projects through the, and I'll let Justin explain what's happening. We had a contractor has backed out. So we just want to move up and take the next set of bids. Which contract so, was it? Horner? This was, yeah, this was on site four and six, Larry. Um, so Horner's bid on site four was like $50,065, while on site six it was $24,390. Uh, those being the lowest bids by quite a bit. Uh, the court accepted those bids and um, there's been certain things that have delayed being able to get to the site and do different things, but ultimately we learned um, at some point that Horner, and I think even maybe you sent an email indicating Correct. that they didn't think they could be able to satisfy their requirements based upon their bid. I then wrote them a letter indicating that we expected them to honor their bid and what those requirements were. In the interim, between the time of the letter that I wrote to Horner, and uh, uh, sometime around in that time, we learned that the federal government would be willing to pay, without any additional cost to the county, uh, the second highest bidders that were that bid at, at that time. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't cost the county any additional funds. Horner had indicated the reasons why they did not believe they could satisfy. So in, in that situation, um, probably what we would request the court to do based on our conversations with the, with the federal government is um, for you to accept the second lowest bid with respect to each of those sites. Site four's second lowest bid was $98,400. Uh, uh, remember on site four, order was 50065 but on site four, we would uh, enter ask that you entertain accepting that for Kyle Addington at $98,400. Uh, this would not cost the county any additional funds, I guess, through something what they've worked out with the Fed. Feds. Yeah, we I filled out the paperwork and we got the we sent it in for approval for waiting for NCRS to send that back to us for the Do rest of the money. In the form of a motion, we would need that in the form of the motion as to cite forward that the court would accept the second lowest bid, which as of April 11, 2023. We've also spoke to Mr. Addington asking if he would accept. Uh, considering the, the time difference between his bid and now, and he said he would. So we would ask the court to probably consider rewarding this bid uh, to cite for $98,400 for Ann to issue the check as required and to rescind our acceptance of the Horner bid previously uh, accepted at a prior meeting. I'll make that motion. Motion back. Larry Morphew. I'll second. Second by both in. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Being none, all favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. We've accepted Kyle Addington's bid on site four. And so that we would need to do the same thing with regard to site six. And again, I think the, it was realized that maybe the Horner bid was drastically underestimated the, the, the work we done. But in site six, you would be accepting the bid, the second lowest bid of extreme excavation at $120,000 as opposed to the $24,390. And again, that would be paid entirely 
uh, we would recoup any payments. So who's who is, is, who is the motion here? Uh, I'll make that. Uh, extreme is, exhibition is Jordan James and Clay Gaither. Okay. Okay. Uh, you say you made that motion too, Larry? Sure. Yeah, motion by Larry Murphy. Second. I got second by Kenneth Callaway. I got two. I got both two, and I got I can second this time. Uh, any discussion or further questions? Have you spoke with uh, with those gentlemen with Extreme? Actually, I had spoke to them. Actually, I had them rewrite a letter to me and stating that they stand by their quotes, and I got them dated, signed in there in my in my file. So I talked to both of them. Can I have copies of those? I will. Okay. Thank you, Charlie. I'll start saying. Pose like that. Take care of. Um, then we'll move on to committee reports, and I have a point of committee before I ask for the other reports. Uh, I want to point a uh, committee uh, to animal con shelter, animal shelter committee. We're gonna call it. We have an animal ordinance committee. This is different than that. This animal shelter committee. And uh, I will give uh, them a mission statement of what they're to do. They're basically to help the animal control and the county. Uh, it's what it is. And hopefully this will create some volunteer hours at, the, uh, at that, and we're pretty sure it will. But the names are James Lindsay, Donna Anderson, Erica Gillum, Miranda Lindsay, Chloe Roach, Tana Reek, a Reich, Angela Stewart, and also in parentheses, Michael McKinney and Debbie McDaniel will be there. It's like the communicators with us and, and the communicators with the court and the mediators, if you will. And uh, y'all know who Michael McKinney is. Uh, Debbie McDaniel is the only active member left of Ohio County Humane Society, which we hope grows someday and becomes viable again. But right now, she's the only active member that I'm aware of. And she's actually helping there now. So just we'll enter that into the minutes as a, a, as a uh, appointment of a new committee. Uh, next. I'm going to ask if there's any other committee reports that any of our committees met since our last court meeting that they make a report on. No, I would just indicate Michael and I have had discussions because we've had a few issues with regard to uh, some of the, the changes in, in the landfill that we need to probably need to have a committee meeting with regard to some of the uh, things that have happened. That we need to probably meet. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you agree, Michael? That we need to. Yes, I believe Larry. Uh, I don't know. David did said he made yeah, motion. I think Larry, Larry was on. Uh, yeah. And then I don't know for sure if Kenny Altry was still. Yeah. And I would like to do that. And Charlie, would you set that meeting up, please? One glad to. I can now. Don't forget it. I, I'm not bold. <laughs> <laughs> to get, meet with the landfill um, and, and investigate to get their folks on their contract. And I've forgotten one other committee appointment I'm going to make before we move on to I forgot about it. Uh, we are, have, are having some severe, uh, a severe prognosis of our heating and air system in this building. Uh, it's working, as you can feel, it's comfortable in here, but we're having the uh, prospect of possibly having to spend some large bucks on this. So I'm appointing a committee to investigate it and look into it. Our uh, third district magistrate, Bo Bennett, have kindly volunteered. Smile about that. <laughs> kindly volunteered after I begged him to. Uh, he's gonna be the magistrate uh, 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 member on that committee. And uh, also going to point Charlie Shields to be on it. Uh, Jimmy uh, Bailey, I mean Jerry Bailey, I'm sorry, Jerry Bailey. And uh, Larry, uh, the heating air guy, Larry Stone. Larry Stone. He is the, uh, 
He is actually the uh, head teacher at OCTC that teaches uh, HVAC. And uh, so that's who I wanted to do it and investigate it. Uh, our uh, uh, people that have the contract on, track on maintaining what's here is going to get some prices on all the things that really needs to be fixed on the system we got. And then we'll look at others as well as maybe either. Uh, the, the, everything's open to this committee. Your charge is to investigate and see what we need to do. Uh, including nothing, and that's what you decide. And we continue to spend six to ten thousand dollars every couple months on maintenance. We did this a few years ago, and we did nothing, and now we see what happens. Well, that was the option we had that we so. chose at that time was nothing. Uh, and just one real briefing on what we've got here we've got a system that was designed in the 70s. Uh, it's water, it's like you've got heat pumps on every all these units. There's heat pumps, but they're water cooled, and there's a large water uh, pumping tower out back that cools that, that pumps water through every unit in this building. It's got water going to it, and then it, and last week the uh, tower itself went down, and we were without heat and air for well we didn't need heat. We were without air for two days here, so one was Sunday, Sunday the month he was out. So that's what it is, and uh, Charlie being the uh, staff member here will be in charge of putting together and seeing that the meeting happens. Would the, would the court entertain any more uh, people to be involved in that? Sure. Okay. You, you got an idea? Well, I, I'd like to speak to them first, but I, I have someone that I think would be Absolutely. an asset to that committee. Absolutely. Please get them for me. Um, but anyway, uh, and the first time y'all meet, this, you just look over all the reports and everything you got. Then if you want to ask, call in our uh, current uh, contractor, you can talk to him about okay. if you want to. Yeah. I'd say probably not the first meeting, but maybe second if you want to bring him in, talk to him, you can. Yeah. Okay, any other, has there any other committee met? Uh, I can give a little update on the uh, mental health committee. Please, uh, yeah. The committee itself hadn't met in a while, and the folks that were kind of headed up, you know, life gets in the way, you get busy. And now the uh, Ohio County Health Coalition has kind of taken the reins on the Suicide Awareness Memorial Walk at the park. It's gonna be September 9th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, this is the third or fourth one? I can't remember if COVID got in the way. At, at least seven. Yeah. And so uh, we actually had our first meeting uh, last Thursday, but we've got a lot more hands involved and we're, we're, we're getting things together. So it's September 9th from 10 to 1 at the Ohio County Park. That sounds great. And we appreciate all you're doing, y'all done. And uh, now we've even opened it up. There's all brand new ways of committing suicide. So we've got to, uh, I mean, for us anyway, so that's something we've got to look at. But that's something that the Health Coalition uh, has put a lot into, uh, which the, the hospital kind of, uh, Ohio County Healthcare kind of, kind of uh, is point man on the Health Coalition. And you can see things that they've done. You know, there's, there's some, uh, there's a whole lot more people around in the mental health care providers mm -hmm. now than we've had pretty much in my lifetime. Uh, we're, we're, and, and add more all the time. Yeah, fentanyl or overdoses is what I was referring to. Uh, fentanyl overdoses, as, uh, as some of them are probably suicide. Mm -hmm. Any other committees met? If not, we're going to start with, I'm sorry, do you have a question? I'm going to start on this end down here with the, with the uh, magistrate request and comments. We're going to start with Larry today. I have nothing to add. Kenneth. Bo. Uh, nothing today. Mike. Nothing from the first district. Thank you. I want to okay. say, Judge, that we do wish the students the best tomorrow and the administration staff and all those. It's another probably hectic day, the first day of the student the school year, so we wish them all the best. Good deal. I do have one other agenda, with, uh, one other item. Christina's here in case you have a question for her. Um, 
Oceda has started a program called Mainly Local. Uh, and that's where they sell ads and put out publications. Y'all probably seen them. You remember the last one before the most frequent had Bigfoot's picture on the front of it? So y'all remember that, right? Right there, the newest one. The newest one is the stage of Jerusalem Ridge, which is, is good. So anyhow, what we need to do to show the court so Ann can handle the funds that come in on that, we need to identify that mainly the local is a part of OCEDA. Am I saying that right? That's what we want to do. We want to identify this mainly local as part of OCEDA, which is already part of fiscal court. So their budget will be in the county budget. Just be a project they're doing. So. Yeah, that, yeah, we've we've had some discussions. I think uh, uh, the the biggest uh, issue is since they're a product of Oceda, they really don't have their own tax ID number and bank account and all that. So it makes it a little bit difficult in operation. And so, in discussions with uh, with Christine and stuff. Uh, I think the hope is is that this would be uh, a different line item for you that would be in, coming in expense and, and profit both on whatever may be done with regard to that uh, publication. Can we have a, a motion to that effect if you don't have a problem with it? I just have a question. So yeah. what the, uh, the funds that come from the advertising in that publication, what are those funds going to be used for? other than the cost of the publication if there's an excess amount of funds what, what's your plan on the use of those funds? Uh, basically right now we're just hoping that the magazine will be self-sustaining so we're not um, really looking to uh, do anything like that at this time our only cost are printing and then we also pay someone a design fee to put it to lay it out and put it together for us so um, we have a committee, the mainly local committee. We meet and discuss, you know, different things, uh, topics, and um, you know, plan the uh, upcoming magazine. So I will definitely mention that at the next meeting, and so we can all be thinking about what we might do if we find ourselves with the excess of funds. I recognize that when I saw the Bigfoot one and the, this latest one, and I'm, I'm impressed with this, and I, I would just hope that if it takes off, that there, there will be some excess funds, so I just wondered, maybe that committee needs to look into what the need is for those excess funds to go to, so we can all help it grow. Absolutely. All right. Thanks. That's all, David. You have, are you going to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we uh, have in, check all the boxes to make the funds come in and go out to, to, for, to support this uh, mainly local publication. In other words, and it, 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 that means uh, mainly local is part of OCDA, is what we say. If, if that okay, you put those words in your mouth, Michael. Yeah. Okay. I'll second the motion. Second to Kent Callaway. Thank you. Any further discussion? Thank you. Any further discussion? Being none, I'm afraid to say aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Uh, Justin, did you have anything else? No, Judge, thank you. Is anyone in the audience got anything for the good of the body? And I want to thank you again. Fordsville City Council is represented here tonight. I really appreciate y'all being Most of our, our, our jailer, Landon Spurlock, is here again. And our county clerk, Bess Ralph, which you've already met tonight. Our tourism director, Jody, is here. Uh, of course, you met Christina. And what would we do without Helen here? Uh, I do have something to say. Uh, I, we had a check that came down to the PVA office. It was actually the little guy from uh, Christian, uh, Crittenden County actually addressed it to PO Box 165, uh, 185 instead of 165. And I came and picked it up the other day for Paula. And y'all's air conditioner out there, I went back to the office and I said, the door was shut. I was on the basement floor and that thing was rattling and you could hear it over the top of the lawnmower because uh, maintenance man was mowing the yard out there. I come back and I said, that air conditioner's going out. And she said, well, Lord, let's hope not because that's a big one. I said, well, it is. And I think somebody told me a couple of days later that it was out. I came in Sunday morning and found that out, yeah. But it was, it was rattling like crazy. All right, thank you. 
if no one has, and did I overlook anybody in the guests? We'd heard from everybody else the guests, and uh, uh, like I said, we'll call this meeting adjourned. See y'all in two weeks.